So what we're going to be talking about tonight is we're going to be talking about queen sacrifices. Lots of fun. There was a lecture done on this maybe about six to eight months ago. So I don't know if too many of you were there. I think Rowan might have been there, but I have tried to mix up the games we're going to look at. There's a lot of interesting examples. There's not too much theory you can take out of a lesson like this. The main goal is we want to inspire you. We want to look at some general principles that can be applied. But of course, every case is different. Roughly the theory and concepts we're going to cover today, we're going to look at forcing play after the queen sacrifice. Obviously, after you lose, your, give up your queen, you would like something for it. We're going to look at material compensation. This is what we're actually getting. We're going to look at attacking the opposing queen. We teach beginners always that you don't want to bring your queen out early. And usually they don't listen and they bring their queen out early anyway. But the reason we say you don't want to bring your queen out early is because your opponent attacks it and he gains temper. Because your queen is obviously worth nine points. If it's attacked by a three-point piece, it has to move. We can look at checking variations carefully when contemplating a queen sacrifice. We don't want to be sacrificing our queen and then starting to think. You need to calculate the whole variation. Look at trying to make the play as forcing as possible in order to prevent the opposing queen from launching a successful counterattack. The queen is a very offensive piece. If we give it time, it can cause us problems, but it's also not the greatest piece at defending because again, it's worth nine points. You can't exactly defend against say two knights very effectively. We're going to look at interesting material compensation. I think there is one game if we have time to get to it where it's the queen for rook and minor piece. Anyone know what rook and minor piece against a queen is called? There's a name for it. Something compensation. Is anyone you're educated? uh no no education yet it's called the lasker compensation you have a rook a minor piece and a pawn against a queen so i don't know exactly why it's called lasker's compensation i presume he had quite a few games with it you can look at some positional queen sacrifices and some sound combinations i will share this on the whatsapp group afterwards there is some interesting stuff you can check out but okay let's get right into the thick of things we're gonna, we have a few games we're going to look at, Joe. The first game is going to be a full game that we look at. Then we're going to get some highlights packages from other games. And then we're going to just get into some exercises. That should be interesting. So this first game is, okay, let me butcher these names quickly. It's Ivan Ivanisevich. That is definitely not how it's pronounced. Against Salah Salem. So, okay. Players you've probably not heard of. I did try to pick games that... I don't think you guys would have seen before just because it's more interesting seeing something new. So this game starts with e5, c5, knight f3, knight f6. The notes you'll see on the side of the board are from Daniel Noroditsky. I did steal this game from somewhere. So that is who to check out if you want more on that. So this is the Nimzovich variation. You get some... There's still some top grandmasters that play this. It often gets move ordered back into the regular Sicilian lines, but it can also lead to unique positions. White goes knight c3, and now black chooses to go d5. So d5 is a very aggressive move. Kind of white has two main options. He either is going to push e5 or he's going to take on d5. If he chooses to capture on d5, black will most say capture on d5. And we'll get some no, line of... Yeah, is there a question? Uh, I requested to join. Uh, can you please accept? Oh, I'm being stupid. Let me accept them and then I must disable the waiting room. Uh, thank you for alerting me to that. Okay, I've disabled the waiting room because, yeah, I'm not paying attention. So I'm going to forget about letting people in. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Bishop B5 and then after Bishop D7. It's not super convincing that white is better. Yeah, you could get some line if you choose to take on d5, where this light switch bishop is potentially a pain. So that's why in the game, instead of capturing, we get e5. Now, this immediately starts to look like a French. We could envision a position where knight d7 and e6 gets played, and then it's completely transposed to a French. However, black decides to keep things interesting because he didn't want this lesson to be boring. He plays d4. So d4 is getting complicated. There's a saying, I think Jeremy Silman was the first 
or at least the first person I know to say it, that the best way to answer a threat is to ignore it, which I think is quite a nice saying. Yeah, we're obviously not spending time moving our knight, we're instead counterattacking our opponent's knight. If white decides to chop on f6, the idea is that we will take on c3. If he simply takes on g7, we'll throw in capturing on d2, and then only capture on g7. And the position should be relatively pleasant for both sides. White's may be slightly better. I think there's a variation we have here. Queen takes, queen takes, bishop takes. Bishop takes and long castles. And okay, white is slightly better because black has more pawn islands, but it's nothing to write home about. So instead, white decides after d4 to play knight to a4. So immediately when the knight comes to the side of the board, we often look at ideas of trapping it. Fortunately, we're not quite able to do that as of yet because we have to spend a tempo moving our knight. And the knight chooses to come back to d7. If we brought it to g4, it would probably just get kicked away by h3. So now can someone suggest a way that white can hinder black's development as much as possible? A very common strategical idea. Uh, first move that comes to mind is uh, e6. I think that's, yeah. Yeah. E6. And the whole reason E6 is very strong is that after F takes E6, if you want to get this dark square bishop out, you have to move two pawns instead of one. And also potentially the king is weakened along this diagonal. I remember the first time I was introduced to this is in the Karu Khan line. I think I did enter it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. This idea of playing E6 to sack the pawn. There's the advanced variation of the Karu Khan. I used to play this as black. There's always this trick off the h4 that everyone plays in blitz because they hope you're going to play e6 and get your bishop trapped of the g4. So instead, people play h6, or I used to. The best move is probably h5. But off the g4, bishop e4, f3, the bishop comes back, and now this e6 idea is very, very strong. I've had a couple of tournament games like this, and off the f takes e6, you just go bishop d3, you trade the bishops, your queen can potentially come into g6. And this is a much worse version for black than what we're going to see in this game because the pawn's already committed to h6, so this diagonal is even more weak. But, okay, let's get back to our scheduled programming. We do see this e6 pawn sacrifice. After f takes e6. Now we need to find a way for white to continue. Black's plan of development is now going to be b6 and bishop b7. If he gets time to play b6, bishop b7, and castles, he's most likely going to be fine. He'll give the pawn back at some point, and he'll get away with it. So the first move that comes to mind, at least when I was first looking at this game, is bishop c4. And we try to get an attack going on e6. I believe the refutation of this, what is it? I think we can just play our queen to a5. And now there's threats of b5 coming. So that could be a big problem for us. If we go and capture on e6, b5 is just going to trap our knight. So that knight on the side is always a strategic and tactical target. So instead, white chooses this very nice move, b4. And I think this is kind of the key move that gives white an opening advantage. He's undermining the d4 pawn. It is obviously being pressured by our knight. If, for example, we try to hold on to everything with, let's say, b6. There's, okay, you can see the computer annotating. This is a mistake. Wish there was a way I could get rid of these fancy little yellow things, but I don't think I can. Which, okay, the reason it's a mistake is after b takes c5, b takes c5, we get knight to g5. And now queen h5, and black is struggling along this diagonal to his king. So in the game, c takes b4 is played. He does go and pick up the pawn. But it comes at the cost of his d4 pawn. The best move, if anyone's interested, was knight c6. And the whole idea is you give up this pawn to try and complete your development. But that isn't what was played. We don't look at chess games because they're perfect. We look at them because we can learn something out of them. We get knight takes d4. And now the knight comes to f6. Unleashing the bishop to protect the pawn on e6. White comes in with bishop b5 check. Developing with tempo is always good. The bishop blocks on d7, and this allows knight takes e6. Okay, so now 
Have we regained our pawn as white? Can I count? Oh yeah. White has regained his pawn and he has a very strong initiative. But black has an idea. What is black's idea in this position? Bunch of a force move for black, I would say. Can somebody, let's actually spend a minute here. Let me put a time on and we can try to calculate some variations. So I'm going to give you a minute and then I'd like some variations as to how the most likely continuation of play is. Yep. Do you have an idea, Brooklyn? Um, thinking of queen, queen c8. Okay, queen c8 to undermine the knight on e6, right? Yeah. Okay, okay let's just say we go queen c8 and I go maybe queen e2. Now, do you want to continue from here? Uh, you can capture the the bishop. Then after capturing the bishop, you can play. You can either play queen c six or the knight c six. Okay, I think off the queen c six, you're running into problems, right? Can somebody see the problem of queen c six? Oh, so a knight c seven. Yeah, knight c7, and okay, we're getting punished for our lack of development. So, queen c8 is maybe not the strongest continuation. It it feels a bit passive, right? What we have going on here, we're very well congested. Yes, Rowan. My best thought so far has been queen a5. Yeah, I think queen a5 is definitely the main line we need to consider. Did you think of what how white would continue in this position? Uh, I was thinking either queen e2 or bishop takes b7, uh, d7. Um, bishop takes d7 is great for us because we get a tempo on the knight. So queen e2 would probably be the best bet for, for white. Does queen e2 work? Probably, right? Queen, so that, doesn't queen e2 lose that piece? Yeah, that, that's what needs to be discussed. Because if the bishop takes b5... What's your plan? No, now? queen takes b5, check. Uh, yeah, now we play queen takes b5, queen takes b5, and again, this knight c7. c7. The knight on e6, it's not a knight, it's an octopus. It's dominating the whole board. So tactics like this do arise. Even though this final position might not be the most clear. It's no one's down any material. Potentially the b pawn's a bit weak. But okay, I think this is definitely a viable continuation. As you also mentioned, if we choose to take on d7, this is maybe not too convincing, right? We're very happy trading pieces as black and getting our development going. Still might and be. And now white issue. has to spend a move trying to defend the knight on the room there. Yeah, we have to defend the knight, and there's potentially ideas of queen e5. So I think black is kind of escaping, yeah. So queen a5 was the idea black was banking on, definitely. And I think he overlooked a move that like, was also overlooked in our very brief analysis, c4. And c4 stabilizes a lot of the problems that white has. So if we had just played one of those inferior moves, we might have lost our advantage. c4 is very, very strong. So if black decides that he just wants to capture, yeah, after c takes b5, it's very difficult for him to formulate a plan. That light squared bishop was very important to the defense of his king. Now the light squares are very weak and he could find himself in some trouble. So he decides to continue with king to f7. He feels like he doesn't have enough time to get rid of that knight and then castle. So he decides to try and get it going manually. Knight g5 check is played. King to g8. And now white decides to bring his knight in from c5. There is a nurture that gives it queen e2 is stronger, but okay. knight a5 as a move is very, very principled. Our knight is on the room, it's tying down our queen, bringing it towards the center is always something that's going to benefit us. 
Bishop g4, and we see nice little blue colors. So blue, I guess, referring to the computers deciding this is an inaccuracy. It's Black's attempt at getting some counterplay going. He could have traded the pieces. Maybe that's the best option. But what I want us to do now is spend some time and think of how white should continue in this position. I'll I give... think I can already see it. Okay. I think I think the idea is quite easy to spot, but I'd like a little bit deeper. The so I'm gonna give you guys two minutes, I think, and then we'll discuss it. If you think you already see it, I think try to analyze the variation a bit deeper, because it's not so easy as it might initially look. Okay. Do we have any ideas? I see Brooklyn has his hand up. What's your thoughts? Um, what about Bishop E E eight? Bishop E8, I think, is definitely the first thought that should enter our head, especially given the spoiler of our the title of our lesson for tonight. So Bishop E8, we obviously threaten the mate on F7. We just put it on the board. Mate on F7 is threatened, and that can definitely be very nice for us. If knight takes E8, we'll just play queen takes G4, and we'll have a crushing attack, right, of our queen coming to E6. So that's relatively easy to spot. Did any of you look at how black should defend this position? I was thinking about g6 is probably the best bet of trying to defend it. Yeah. I don't I'm, see any other yeah. way you of You could say best seven, or you can say only, so. right? So, yeah. 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 We have to go g6. And now what? I was thinking probably like a knight c to, to e7. Or mm. okay. e6. I was trying to get my knight to e6. Yeah. And then play bishop. So like seven maybe like eight. yeah. Um so like a combination of probably queen takes g4, knight f7, and uh, knight e6, or um okay. Yeah. Uh, like what you're thinking there. And I think you're almost in the right track. I think knight e6 immediately of Obviously, probably just runs into takes, right? So that's not too strong. You didn't mention that. Why is my keyboard not working? Okay. You didn't mention that the idea of some combination of queen takes g4 and knight takes g4 and then something of knight e6 is a potential, which, okay, is what was played. But even this isn't that clear. So this needs a lot of calculation, which, okay, we're not going to spend too much time on it today. But I would like us to try to calculate a position, and then I want an evaluation. Whenever you are solving tactics or you're asked to calculate something, you need to calculate it to a point where you can give an evaluation of the position. So you need to get to a point where you can say, okay, I am winning this position, which okay, might be easy, might be hard. So what I'd like you guys to do is find something concrete for what. We found the idea, the imagination part is here, is done. Now we need to find the calculation part. 
I think there is multiple ways that white can gain an advantage here. So I'm not going to set a time limit. Just calculate something. And when you think you've done that, we'll have a look at it. Okay. Do you have an idea, Brooklyn? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what variation have you calculated? I calculated like 96. Okay, and then what is Black going to do? I like just try to make a waiting move or nothing, just do nothing, like night. <laughs> <laughs> this is the dream, right? If he does this, then we made him. Right? That's yeah. The dream. Oh, yeah. So we need to see. Is there some way black can stop this? Uh, yes. Uh, knight to e5. Knight e5. And that covers then f7. I was thinking maybe like f4. f4. Hitting the knight b to d7. Uh, F takes E5, Knight takes E5, and then Bishop B, uh, B2. Uh, wait, wait. What if you don't take the pawn and take the, the white bishop? That could also mm, be a yeah. bit of a problem, right? So, Seems like the white, yeah. The moment the bishop goes, a lot of our attack goes. And if we just, okay, I've somehow gone out of the study now. How do I get back? He's come back. Um, hmm. Let's link to this thing. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Yeah, we have returned. So, yeah, after the light bishop goes, all our attack is gone. And if we count the material, I don't think we have enough. What do we have? We have a bishop for a queen. Last time I checked, that wasn't worth a queen. So we need something a bit more convincing. What <clears throat> I do find it interesting that everyone wants to play ninety six first. Could we have we been calculating starting of bishop f7? Yeah. I started doing that now after the I was thinking bishop f7, uh, king g7, bishop b2, but then king h6. And then the king appears quite safe on h6. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's actually bishop f2 king g7 knight c to e6 then king h6 and then d4 okay and let's have a look at that position bishop f7 king g7 knight e6 and king h6 and d4 and now there's a lot of scary discovered attacks being threatened so i'm not exactly sure how black should defend this it's very difficult to find a move at the very least. 
I'm presuming if I go knight c6 that you have something? Or are you bluffing me? Uh, bluffing you. <laughs> um... <laughs> Hmm. I mean, okay. It feels like there should be something out there. I'm not entirely sure what exactly it is yet, but something tells me there's something. Let's see if we can find it. Because there's ideas of going like knight h3, king h5, if he has to go king h5, which I think he does, and then something with knight f4 could even be an idea. What about knight on e to f4? Knight e to f4. What is your plan? Then you can be able to push g3. Like the king will, yeah. Okay, in which position are you talking about? Like I'm saying, if you play knight h, oh, okay. knight h3, like, then you play, yeah. Now or then we... you just run back. Yeah, King H6 is our problem, yeah. Okay, I didn't see that one. Nah, and the knight needs to be on E6 to control G7. There is a variation, yeah. I don't want to sit here forever. What what was the variation we had? Did I give a variation? Maybe I didn't. Hmm. Where's my computer? That'll tell me answers. Right. Yeah, Michael? Yeah, okay, do we have a real answer before we talk to the machine? Yeah, can you go back uh, three moves back? Three moves. Yeah, uh, wait, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was already played yeah, bishop f7. Do you want to play yeah. bishop f7? Yeah, bishop f7. King g7. Then see me uh, knight to e6. Okay, and of king h6 was what we were trying to solve. Yeah, then yeah, king, then yeah, d4. d4, we said knight c6 because I couldn't work out what I was doing. Then uh, what if you play... uh? Knight e4. Knight e4. Okay, my options are probably kind of easy, right? I have to go king h5. Then uh, can't you play uh, h3? <laughs> and it feels very difficult practically for black, but... Um, yeah, I think black should be in trouble now. Not sure if anyone sees a move that could potentially help black defend. But the idea of g4 potentially followed up by bishop f4. Bishop g3 is very, very powerful. And if okay, if we allow this h file to get open, the rook gets involved and it's completely over. Let's just see if Mr. Computer agrees. Wait, yeah, Michael, he's a nice guy. Michael, yes. What if instead of what if you don't push the h3 pawn, but go for a nice c3. You play knights. What? Sorry, can you say it again? Knight g3. Knight g3. Okay, the only move is king h4. Then you can play bishop. What is it? Bishop g5 checkmate. Checkmate. Yay, checkmate. Until it's not. And then we feel a bit <laughs> silly because we're down a piece. <laughs> so you need to be careful in these situations often the side that okay had the queen sack played against them can look to give back material but okay the h3 line is good enough now we just need something if our king decides he wants to come to f6 which is always played in the game bishop b2 bishop b2 can be played very naturally um you have a move if i go 95 then you can play f4. Then f4 is very strong, yeah. Okay, and if I go king f5 off the bishop e2. King f5, h3. I always want to play h3. I think in this situation, I'm not sure it's so strong. Oh, okay. I thought when the knight is still on, on e3. <laughs> on e5, I mean. Yeah, okay. No, but uh, there is... It's still not immediately clear that this is bad, though, is it? Because uh, the knight has to come back to h6, and then maybe g4, and maybe I can take it. But when you... as We have these instincts as chess players. 
when the king starts getting surrounded by all the pieces, you know the mates are coming, right? And Black doesn't have many defenders of his king. I'm sure there will be something, yeah. Let's see the variation given. Okay, they felt that f4 is the better move. And I think f4 is just solidifying everything. Is there something wrong with bishop b2? What are we saying? Bishop b2 is terrible because queen e5, obviously. So the point of queen e5 is you probably have to take it. And then after knight takes e5, I've managed to give the queen back. And your three pieces, you're potentially under a lot of fire. So superfluous knights could lead to problems for white in the long run. So f4 just solidifies everything. It controls the e5 square. Very important. So now we may be threatening bishop e2. Let's just see how the game concluded. Black played h6. We got bishop b2. King came to f5. Now knight d4. The king marches. Decides to come back. If king takes f4 gets played, then there's a long line given of knight e2. King takes g5, h4. King f5, castles, and the king is in a lot of trouble. And eventually gets mated in the very middle of the board. So king f6 got played. Now the knight dropped back to b3, and we don't even get to see a checkmate. You should all ask for your money back. He simply goes and picks up the queen and is left up a piece for now. The knight develops. If we take here, we run into... Is it captures? I think it's captures like this. And now if you capture the bishop, there's a discovered attack. So lots of tactics that always cause us problems. So knight c6 gets played. We see more trades and the bishop is preserved. And eventually white is up a piece and black decides to give it up. So this is a very nice game. It, there's a lot of calculation. You could spend a whole evening looking at this game, calculating all the variations. We do want to focus a bit more on the principles and ideas, but I think we definitely got something out of this game. The, with the calculation part, you just need to calculate it to a point that you, you really need to trust your instincts. One, you need to calculate it to a point where you can trust your instincts. Sometimes that point is further away for some people than it is for other people, but... The moment the king gets out in the center, we should be able to find something. Let's go to another example. So this one's this one's very interesting. It is um uh, liquid steam. How do I close this? It's giving me annoying pop-ups. Okay, so this position is black to move. I'm gonna give you guys let's say this is kind of interesting. Let's right? say just under three minutes to come up with something. It's black to move. I want you to evaluate the position for both sides, find the plans, find the ideas. Sorry, Michael. Yes. Michael? Yes, Brooklyn. Who am I playing? It is Black's move. I don't necessarily need you to find moves, but I want an evaluation of both sides' plans. But it is Black to move. So can you please flip the board? Uh, I mean, I think it's more fun looking for that. We'll flip it after you've, everyone's finished looking at it. We need to understand like both sides' plans. All right.
Okay. Uh, three minutes is up. Does anyone have some ideas or just some thoughts you want to share? We don't need you to give us the whole continuation of the game. Just something you think is interesting. Um, I personally think White is better in this position. Okay. Um, Why is that? I'm assuming, uh, well, Black sort of is limited in his ideas. Yeah, He's got either like Castling or Knight F5. Um, okay. Uh, Knight F5 allows, a, allows White to try and play like G4 and start a kingside attack at the right time. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, if Black castles or something, again, like G4 or Queen H5 or even possibly Knight F6 check could be a possibility and it could be very deadly for Black. So I feel like Black is very limited in his choices, yeah. Okay, no, fair enough. Black does have two extra pawns, but white has a lot of compensation for it. Does anyone else have something they would like to add? Nobody. Okay, what if I can even sell this position more for white? What if I told you that white is a tactical threat? Let's say black is a professional and he decides to play a5 thinking he's alpha zero. Can we find a tactical blow for white? Uh, Michael? Yes, Manasha. Okay. Uh, this one, I really don't know if it's a tactic, but I think if white plays um, knight takes c5, uh, queen takes c5, and uh, white manages to push f5. Okay, and then you're saying there's an attack going, yeah? Yeah, I think yeah. you're definitely right. There is an attack coming. I don't think black's position is terrible, but Okay, we did give you this one extra move with a5. So there is something a bit better. Uh, winning material tactic. That, that is part of like the strategic plans. f5 is definitely what white wants to play. And if we can get it in, we're going to be quite happy. One of black's pieces is very short of squares. Which piece is that? He's queen. I'm trying to trap his queen. Mm-hmm. Is it simply knight f6 check and then bishop uh, e4? Yep, that's entirely correct. Like that. no, the queen's just I've been trapped. staring at this for a while, but I think <laughs> I'm thinking the queen can just move to, to d4 the entire time. I see. Yeah, often these hallucinations can happen and it throws off your whole calculations. So if anything, this makes white's position even better because we have this tactical threat. If we look at the starting position, how do we exactly escape from this? Maybe we have to play a move like queen c6? even just to get our queen out of there. So it's quite unpleasant. But in this game, let's now flip the board because we want to see the fun perspective. We've played as B was B6. Now, okay, in light, this move might make sense, but once we see the tactic, it seems completely crazy. Because, okay, are we willing to give up our queen? And the answer is obviously yes, given by the title of our lecture. If something like queen c6 is played, looking to keep the queen, there's a variation given off the knight a5, queen comes to a4, knight takes b7, bishop b7, knight takes c5, queen c6, and the queen comes to f2, we go with Munash's plan of playing f5, and we just crush white, black completely. So that's not really an option. b6 is played, completely allowing this tactic, and white decides to go for it. He plays knight f6. G takes f6, bishop e4, and just plays f5, fixing the pawn structure. So after bishop takes d5, knight takes d5. 
So when the smoke clears, Black has still his two extra pawns that he had when he started, and he has two bishops. And he has one extra thing. He has a g-file. Whenever you're sacking your queen, you almost always need an attack. Even if you have positional compensation or something like that, the attack is usually going to be your main form of compensation. And the reason for that is that a queen can't necessarily defend very well. It's a very strong attacking piece, but given its great value, you don't want to be giving it up and tying it down to defense. So in this game now, white chose to play rook f3. He plays rook f3, so he doesn't drop his c3 pawn. And the bishop comes to b7. There's potential for pieces to coordinate here. Knight comes back to d2. A bit of a passive move. There are some long variations given here by Mr. Naroditsky, but I don't feel like looking at them too much. I will share the study link after the session if you people want to look at it a bit more deeply. Rook comes to g8, eyeing g2. We get knight coming to b3, tempering the dark squared bishop. And the bishop comes to e3. Now it's suddenly difficult to protect this pawn on f4. So the one logical move to protect the pawn is g3. And okay, we see our good friend Mr. Blue Circle back again. And the reason for this is because now this long diagonal is completely weakened and the path to the king is clear. Okay, can we calculate now a line where black gains an advantage? Or let's just find a way how we want to continue with black. If you have an idea, you are welcome to just unmute yourself and say it or type it in the chat. Okay, does anyone have some ideas or should I start picking on people? Yeah, we haven't we heard from, we haven't heard from Lucian or Tequitra. You guys got any ideas? Still looking. All right, that's fine. Take your time. It is a difficult position because if we go wrong yeah we're probably just going to be down a queen for the rest of the game so we need to be careful that we keep on with our initiative Okay. Does anyone have any candidate moves they've looked at? Let's just hear something and we can analyze stuff together. Well, well, my first thought initially was knight takes c3, trying to open up the light squared bishop, but it's not really working because queen just takes your bishop and... Yeah, and then I okay, guess very hard. We're, white's completely happy giving the exchange back. So yeah. I think opening up the bishop is definitely part of what we would like to do. The problem is I can't find a good way of doing that. Uh, uh, Michael. Uh, Brooklyn, you got a 
solution to stop pollution. Uh, can I can I try here? Uh, okay, so I was not sure. Okay, yep. What's the plan? Uh, I was thinking, what if you take uh, the point on FC on F4 with the bishop? Okay. I presume we need to have a comeback after he takes back. Then uh, knight takes f4. Knight takes f4. So now we've... What are we down here is black? Who's good at counting? So we have four pawns and a bishop for a queen at the moment. And we have an exchange lying in the wait, if we want that. And I believe this is what was played in the game. Which, okay, now things are getting very unclear. We still have that pin. We don't are in no hurry to take that rook on f3. We don't take pinned pieces. The queen decides to move to f1. Okay, let's maybe spend some time going through these positions. Naroditsky's notes here say an incredible position. White is up a queen, but he is tied up from head to toe, and he can do nothing about it. Instead, he can only sit and wait. For black to crash through along the g-file, it was therefore of paramount importance to chase the knight away from f4, while white still had the opportunity. After queen to e3, there's a variation given of knight g2, queen f2, and the knight comes to h4, putting more pressure on f3, knight d2, rook g4, and rook to g1. And white threatens to see off the g-file with rook g3, and then render the pin useless after king g1. So this could be a way white could maybe have escaped. Queen f1 does not put any pressure on black. There is absolutely no threat. The pin still exists. And white is never really getting out of this pin. The king is permanently trapped here. This is a very nice concept. Black just long castles. So he is perfectly fine. He's almost playing this like he's not down material. Which, okay, this takes a lot of guts and a lot, I think a lot of experience to play a position like this. Knight comes to c5. This is very, very questionable. It's a desperate attempt at getting an attack. The idea is that if the takes the b pawn, the rook's going to come to b1. Potentially you sack for this bishop. Potentially you get something going of queen to a6 if you can get that all in. So this is the try. Black just says bishop c6, no problems. And now what you're doing? Now maybe he's going to take that knight at the right moment. And oh yeah, it's just another tactical problem for white. Knight comes to d3. Now he challenges the knight on f5. But just rook g4. Now if knight takes f4 gets played, rook takes f4. Are we going to win a full rook? The rook comes to e1. Black doubles up on the g file. Knight takes f4. Rook takes f4 and rook e3. Now all of these white pieces are tied up. Black's pieces are too active. Rook comes into g4. We get queen to h3 and just h5. Black's in no hurry. White's completely tied up. And whenever we feel like it, we are going to capture on f3. Of the captures, just play rook f4. And we are going to be up. I think we're going to have four pawns, a rook and a bishop. So it should be a very pleasant position for us. So this is where the game ended. So I think a very, very nice game from Black. The position looked very difficult out of the opening and this queen sacrifice got him some activity, especially in practical games. It's really important that you get active. So not just where you sack your queen, but he needed something. Even though he had those two pawns, he was going to fall victim to a very strong attack. If there's... No questions, we will move on to our next example. So this is taken from a game between Alan Naroditsky, which I think is some relative of Daniel Naroditsky, and against John Cohen. So here we see this material equal, I think white's up two pawns, but black is an attack going. Maybe let's see this from black's perspective. So Okay, I'm going to give you guys three minutes again to come up with some ideas, and then we're going to discuss the position. There is a couple of very natural moves, maybe just calculated slightly further if you feel like you see them quite quickly. Three minutes starts now. It is black to move.
Okay, I got bored of waiting. It's been two minutes. Does someone have some ideas or something interesting they've observed in the position? Not a bit more time. Okay, Nash has got something. Uh, you, you said it's black to play, right? Yes, it is black to move. What if we just take the F2 pawn? Yeah, we can do that. It's completely free, right? We know if the knight takes F2, king F2, there's discovered attack. So if the knight F2, white cannot take back. So this is most likely our best move for black, because we are at the very least gaining a pawn, but in the end, we're still down a pawn. So let's just say we continue with rook F1, and what are you doing? Uh, bishop E4. Bishop E4. You're not pressuring G2, but whoops. Okay, le let's go into this uh, variation. Uh, rook takes F2. Don't know why it's not letting me do this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's queen on G3 yeah, but, is causing but, a lot of problems. But, but, but don't you drop your bishop back? to 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 uh d5 to mm. break the pin you can play bishop d5 to break the pin but if you're still down in like oh, yeah no, you're not taking... we're down in exchange, in exchange i believe yeah so the queen can maybe just come to c2 and i don't think i'm too convinced by what's been done yeah. so yeah i think the pin on b3 is a very important defensive resource for white Yeah. Does anyone else have some continuations of the Rick F1 that they think are strong? Or well, maybe even some other moves. Yes, Rowan? I was thinking like Knight H3. Check. Knight H3. And I don't know if you noticed, but I can take that off a pawn. Yeah, and then Bishop takes. Bishop takes, and now this is potentially a problem. Okay. Um... The only problem is queen takes f, yep. And suddenly white has no problems in the world. And he should win the end game up in exchange, right? So that is... Oh, no, it's two bishops. <laughs> two bishops, yeah. It's two bishops, but a bishop isn't a rook. So <laughs> I think you can definitely try as black, but you're not going to have too much joy. So, okay, so we need something more inspiring. We will keep looking. We did talk at the start about our forcing moves are always what you want to look for, but sometimes you need to play a quiet move to prepare a forcing move. So if we just think about this position, okay, our knight is hit. The natural reaction is that we either need to move our knight or we need to protect our knight. We cannot move Michael. our knight because of the pin. Yes, Brooklyn? I'm thinking of a crazy idea, like to sick the queen. Mm, someone read the lesson title. What are you thinking? Queen captures g2. Queen captures g2. This... Is very enthusiastic, and after king takes g2, then bishop to um, bishop to e4, bishop e4, and you dream I play king g1, right? King g1, and then knight h3, and this is a well known pattern, so that would be very nice. So, this is definitely something that is going to deserve to be looked at. I, however, probably am not too interested in getting checkmated, so I'm going to go king g3. Oh, no. Like the problem is the the pin is uh, the queen pinning the rook. 
Yeah. Or else, if the queen wasn't feeding the rook, at least, yeah. There's some stuff happening, yeah. Oh, that's mate in one, right? Yeah. If I'm being... mm. Oh, it's not mate. The king can go to g2, and then at the very least, you can pick up a queen back or something like that. But yeah, there's a lot of more promising ideas. So that queen is being very annoying, at least defending a lot of the problems that white has in the position. So this doesn't quite work either. So this is what I was talking about, about how we need to play a quiet move to prepare for our active enforcing moves. The move played is just bishop h4, which I don't think I've seen such a boring move played in such an interesting position. But what is the threat now for black? Isn't it just simply queen takes no. g2, king takes, and then bishop e4. to e5? Mm, that does work, e4. right? I believe so. Now that's what far. If we just decide that pushing our a pawn is cool, now suddenly it's kind of hard to move to g3. So we need to, one, stop that idea. And there's actually another threat. The other threat is bishop h3. It's less flashy, but off the bishop h3, you can't take this and you just get mated. So those are definitely going to cause white a lot of headaches. In the game, he came back with bishop to g3, which now allows queen takes g2, king d2, bishop e4, and his own bishop is blocking g3. And the game ended in mate over here. So this is quite a nice example. It gets a bit more flashy and flamboyant with all queen takes g2 but the move bishop h4 is just a really class move to repair all these ideas so that was a nice game let's uh, look at one more of these and then we'll get into some exercises this is gonna be is gonna take us a while to get through so this position first off let's count material both sides have three pieces both sides have five pawns a rook and a queen okay so it's equal material the black rook is under threat, so the most natural moves to play are maybe something like rook d8, maybe rook c8. Both feel very natural to me. The move played was d takes e4. Yeah, I'm going to give you guys three minutes to analyze this position. We want to again come up with the plans for both sides. We want to see some ideas that could potentially play out in the game. So your time starts now.
Okay. So does anyone have any thoughts or comments about the position they would like to share? Um, I think well, I can just take the work. Okay. So I calculate the difference of H, right? Mm -hmm. uh, e takes F3. Oh, wait, no, that's London's making one. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Black uh, would have to play a different move, yeah. That, that ruined everything I calculated. <laughs> no, fair uh, enough. Because I calculated, for example, if you just have to protect the bishop by running it back, you play uh, this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if he just captures, it's not too convincing, and Black's just down the exchange. Can I think maybe even capture on e4 now? I'm not sure. So, okay, that is worth looking at. Does anyone else have some variations that they calculated? I will say this is probably the trickiest position we're going to look at this evening. It's not immediately clear why certain variations work and others don't, and it does require some analysis. I think the most critical thing we need to look at is bishop takes f8, right? It, the rook was attacked, the rook didn't move, we would ideally like to take the rook. Can we find some options here for black? If we take on f8, that's maybe not too convincing because queen d6, right? And there's potential back rank problems. So what are the other ways black can stop checkmate? Not too many. We have to move our knight on f6. So the most natural move is probably knight h5. And that does stop mate to some degree. And also tempos the queen. If the queen comes somewhere like f2, after e takes f3, g takes f3, there's this very nice move bishop d4 which distracts the queen away from the defense of f3 and okay the whole white king side falls apart and after king g1 queen g5 mate is going to come soon so this is not really an option for white so is this rook sack brilliant mm, apparently not queen d6 holds everything together for white and the reason it holds everything together is there's potential for back rack mates we keep the bishop alive so the variation given by Daniel Noroditsky looked at e takes f3 and then bishop e7. And after f takes g2, king g1, g5 is needed to prevent back rank problems, queen d8, king g7, and just pawn to c3. Why is pawn c3 played? Sorry, am I not focusing here? Oh, sorry, Michael, go back. No, to which position? Before you play G5. Best position. Okay, never mind. You're okay. thinking knight f4, right? No, I was thinking bishop uh, d4. Because I saw earlier when the queen was still on g3, that was my initial idea to bring it there. Yeah. Checkmate. The squares for the king are very limited. So plans like bishop f4 and bishop d4 are very desirable. And it, it, which might explain why white goes and plays c3 to potentially alleviate the queen from needing to protect this. If we just capture this, not immediately clear why this is not good. Probably because it's checkmate. Yeah, that, so, yes, yeah. it's a very tricky tactical. Yeah, that's been the entire time, actually, because it was a back rank before. That's why you could never take the bishop. Yeah, so there's back ranks going both ways. It's very tactical and dynamic. So in the game, this wasn't chosen. In the game, he chose to throw in c4, which okay, we see in, in yellow on the side, so it is a mistake, but it's not super obvious without deep analysis. This tempos the queen. The queen decides to come to f5, and now all black wants to do is rip open this diagonal to the king. Now white decides to go bishop takes f8. Black continues with knight h5. This is always how he defends g7. Queen comes to g4. Now is where I want you people to calculate again. 
So we are getting to that range where a lot of potential attacks are happening against the white king. We need to come up with a concrete variation. And then an assessment, an evaluation of at the end of that calculation. So I won't give you guys a time limit. If you think you have an answer or something interesting, you're welcome to speak up. I see Brooklyn has his hand raised. Do you have an idea, Brooklyn? I have an idea. Okay. Michael? Yes, um, Brooklyn. What about E captures F3? Okay, E captures F3 is definitely and, probably the first move. What did you calculate for white, Joe? Um, that's like if he, if he captures your queen, then you can capture the, yeah, then you can capture on, on G, G2. Okay, and after king g1. Then bishop d d4. Okay, this is close to working, but did you maybe miss queen f2? But like, won't you be, won't you be better here? Like, black one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take my queen, you're not better. I can tell you that, right? Because you're down a rook and a piece. What about like after capturing the queen and then you go knight, knight f3. Ah, sorry, knight. I meant to say knight, knight f4. Knight f4, yeah, knight f4. Okay, so now we've kind of, you've moved away from the whole checkmating idea and you're saying you want to promote this pawn. The problem is, let's just say I'm the worst chess player ever. I let you do some stuff. You check me and you go and get to make a queen. Even if I sacrifice a full rook, you might still be losing because I'm up a piece. I think there is probably a better defense to this, like maybe putting the bishop here so that I cover the square. But I don't, okay, maybe I'm running into forks now. So I'm not so sure. But the bottom line is white can give back material and still be ahead. So we do need something a bit more decisive. But I like what you're thinking. You know, quite close to the solution. Someone else have a different idea or maybe an improvement on the previous idea? Okay, Michael. Mm, yeah, what's the plan? Uh, can I ask something on uh, Brooklyn's variation? Okay, sure. So... Yeah, uh, queen two. Yeah, F take. Queen takes, pawn takes. Yeah, but they, they, can you can you can you move one more back? Mm. Yeah, here. Yeah. Um, what if you play um, bishop on d4 first? D4 first. This is a move, but the problem is, again, I can even just play queen f3, and that ends the discussion, right? Because now you haven't captured my queen. I'm a rook up and a queen up. So there's a, I have way too much material, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I can tell you, you're, you're on the right track. We just need to calculate that variation a bit more clearly. Because e takes f3 is the first move and queen takes f5 gets played, but I need something more concrete than the variation we got so far. The final position of this game is actually very nice. I think Mr. Naroditsky has a nice quote about it. How he says it should be displayed in the Louvre or however you pronounce that fancy French art place.
Brooklyn, you have your hand up. Is that a new idea or did you just not put your hand down? Uh, sorry, I forgot to lower my hand down. <laughs> no, it's fine. Not everyone does. I should honestly, I like, automatically lower it or something. But hey. <laughs> I think it's made in four, if I'm correct, from this position. I think it's made in four. Maybe I'm missing some ways of delaying mate, but we don't need to calculate too deeply. Yeah, I'll give you one more move. Taking on G2 is also right. So it's, it's now made in three. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Don't quote me on it, but I think it's made in three. Maybe I'm completely wrong and there's no mate. That would be funny. What if what what if you try to eliminate the queen first? Okay, so you're suggesting playing e takes f5. Okay, yeah. this is definitely a good idea. I will probably bring my bishop to c5. What about you taking the or I can take a free bishop? Either way, I'm up, I'm up a rook at least. That's why I'm up more than a rook. Um, Can't you take with a bishop and you have this? The pawn on G2, which will give white some stress. Okay, let's just say you take the bishop. You know that pawn on G2 you mentioned? It's not there anymore. I took it. Like All right. <laughs> and okay, even this position, I think black might have a chance I, here, but you're not. Yeah, this black can have a chance with the pawns. You have a chance, but you're not winning. And this is like worst case scenario is I give up a full rook for this pawn. So yeah, I think we do need something slightly more convincing. It's a very nice idea though. So, uh, uh, okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. So what if I told you Brooklyn was right about the next move as well? <laughs> uh, we were so close, but yet so far. Queen F2. And we need one more move. Uh, knight. Knight 3, F3, Knight G3. H no no knight knight f4 right okay oh well, well, are you gonna suggest something different where's she saying what's the plan are we playing knight g3 <laughs> uh, I yes yes I was, oh oh okay sorry <laughs> i just saw like after the the night i just saw like the night is gonna go on e2 and then mate yeah so you have the right idea just the slightly wrong way of getting there knight f4 the knight f4 yeah and the knight just comes to x3 h3 next and it's made and there's no way to stop it it's beautiful so this final position queen and a rook extra for white but there's no way to stop mate so a very nice game by black the computers, they say everything was terrible and that white should have defended. But again, in a practical game, this is very, very difficult to defend. We do have about 10 minutes left. So let's see if we can get through some of these exercises. I think they start off quite easy. So we should be able to speed run for you through a few of them. This first one, I'll give you a minute. Let me hide answers. It's not too difficult and then they're going to get harder from you. So I'll give you a minute and then we'll discuss the answer.
Um, I think I've solved it already. Yeah, uh, I think there's actually a chance you might have seen these problems before as well. But okay, this one is relatively straightforward. What's the answer? Yeah, queen f7, king f7, and bishop to e6. Yeah, just a simple mate and two. Obviously, with these positions where it's all forcing moves, it's a lot easier to calculate. I was hallucinating king h8, yeah, and I'm like, wait, no, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we can suddenly jump our king. I was actually reading this book on the history of chess. It's quite interesting. And they talk about like the origins of castling, where there was like some rule where your king could move two squares or something on like one special move each game, something like that. If we could do that, we might escape. But yeah, it's kind of difficult. On to the next one. So this is white to play again. This one might be a little bit harder. I think I'm not going to give a time limit. You guys can just say if you have an answer or a variation that you think is interesting. The thing about these puzzles is it's always a lot easier to solve when you know what you're looking for. We know we're looking for queen sacrifices. It makes it a lot easier. But what you need to do is you need to get such a good mastery of these positions and ideas that you see it when you're not looking for it almost. Okay, does someone have some ideas or variations? Oh, Let's look at Anna and Hagar's idea. You were saying knight h6. What is your plan of the king to h8? Is there a plan? Because it feels like the king is quite safe now. So maybe this might not work. Um, queen yeah. comes to g. Queen comes to g5. Queen g5. This might work. After f takes g5, what is your plan? Then the knight comes to h6. Now yeah, knight h6. h6. And it's a very slight difference to the variation that was suggested previously, because now this diagonal is open. So very yeah, nicely done. Now bishop b2 leads to mate. Okay. That was move order that was tricking me. Uh... <laughs> Michael. Yes, the quit swap. I, I just want to say... I saw that this mate is possible, right? But the problem was that I was thinking, how can I remove f6? <laughs> yeah. That was the because I saw that there is a mate if the knight goes there and the bishop goes there. But my problem was that how can I remove f6? Was I only thought I must capture f6. <laughs> I was like, ah, how am I going to capture f6? Yeah, no, that is the right way of thinking about it. And I think you would come to the right idea. I've also seen some people suggest, yeah, they want to play knight h6, and then after king h8, they try to play queen g5. Obviously, this is bad because black can play a check, with, but they're yeah, just... Another funny another funny one that uh, Issa, I saw earlier is um, if you go queen there first, queen g5 check, uh, pawn takes, and then bishop b7, uh, b2, yeah. again, queen g2 mate. And that's mate in one. Yeah, so move order is always very important. we got to calculate these accurately. Okay, let's go to another one. So this is white to play again. Let's find the best continuation.
Okay, uh, Michael. Uh, speedy, yeah. What's your idea, Munasha? Uh, like, uh, it's just a thought. Like, what if you play uh, C6, D6? Okay, have I just take back with the pawn? Then uh, you play um, knight takes d6. Knight takes d6. Now I can't take back because of tricks here, right? Um, hmm, that looks kind of good. Kind of good. Do I have something more inspiring? Maybe after c takes d6, I can just play bishop takes e4. What's your plan now? Take the bishop with the knight. Okay, but now I take back on d6. And now there's only one knight in my face instead of two. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. No, that's a nice idea, though. That's definitely the knight coming in around the king. We all know those patterns. Yeah, can, can I try? Yeah, if you have an idea around. Queen takes f4. Mm. I, I would believe you found this by yourself and then see my leaked answers. Yes, no, I did because of <laughs> purely because of this idea. No, I, as soon as you see what I was thinking. Okay, we have to uh, capture knight back. To, to F, F6. Knight F6. And, and there's no way to read. And as soon of... as he moves his queen away from the protection of F7. No, it's just mate. So a very nice little mate of our two knights working together. Which, okay, the, there's a lot of potential for these knights to come around you. Again, I think this puzzle would be a lot harder if we weren't looking at queen sacrifices, but knowing the theme definitely helps. Nicely done, Rowan. Uh, okay, here's another one. This one's a bit trickier, so maybe let's let's spend a little bit of time on you. I'm going to give you guys like, hey, let's say, let's say two minutes before I accept some answers. I want to see a bit more of the variation calculated because this is a bit longer. So it's white to play. Okay, does anyone have some ideas? Okay, the, obvi the obvious <clears throat> queen takes c4 doesn't, it doesn't look like it works because the rook can always block the check. Okay, so that's a good observation. Uh, maybe the... the Wow, it's actually tricky. <laughs> I was actually looking a little bit deeper down the same line, like queen takes c4, queen takes c4, bishop to f5, check, rook, locks, the rook, rook to, to e8, check, knight, locks. Um, and then like rook to, to c1, but I don't think it's... You know, it's no. uh, oh, I, th I think actually what wins there is the knight to, to e5. 95 is also definitely a, an option. Do they both win? Can I count? What, what is material year? Material year is we are down an exchange, so we're not winning, right? We get our we, exchange we back and the exchange we, back, but we're down a pawn still. But we can win the full exchange with the uh, 95. And then the queen yeah. stays on the board. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think 95 is better because yeah, I can just go king c7, right? Oh. And maybe I'm weaseling my way out. So I got ninety. But what, what if after you play king uh, uh, c seven? 
Yeah, mm-hmm. then yeah, uh, you you play Bishop F4. Bishop F4. Bishop F4. Yeah, and okay, this isn't starting to look fun, is it? Yeah, this doesn't look fun. What happened to me? Um yeah, I might just be in a lot of trouble. It's okay, everything's fine. But okay, I think 95 is just a lot cleaner. We don't have to calculate all of these. I'm not entirely sure that you're winning yet. I'm presuming you uh, are somehow. Okay, then we take the rook. Take the rook, king takes. And I we take this. the knight. Yeah, okay. So that's relatively comfortable. I think that does work. Does our friend Mr. Computer agree with us? This queen it says black's better. What, what was I missing? G6. Okay, G6 is a nice move to force you to resolve this pin now. So, okay, that's something I did overlook. If we just play knight E5 in this position, the queen does need to move. Queen B5 is what we looked at. And okay, the continuations feel natural here. Yeah, rook C1, check. And then we go and capture the knight. And now we're also on the C5, and rook takes C5 is going to win us back our queen. And knight b6 is going to checkmate the guy. So a very nice combination by white. It didn't need to be calculated a bit. Um, do we want to greed one more problem? Eh, I'm having fun. Let's do one more problem. So this is black to play. Uh, let me flip the board for you guys. Whenever somebody comes up with an answer, you're just welcome to say it. This will be the last exercise of the Had evening. Move, Michael. I tried to do that and I failed, but you're honest people. Actually, no, none of you are honest. Let me change the position. <laughs> okay, white to play. Yeah, the other one was more fun. I should have hidden the moves, but hey. Oh, I think it starts with the knight sacrifice. Knight sacrifice. On, yes, on, on C7. Knight takes C7 if I just play queen takes C7. Oh, yeah. Okay, the queen always comes back to block on C6. Yeah, <laughs> otherwise that would be very nice, but fortunate. Yeah. But okay, knight takes C7 definitely feels like it could be a part of it. White also is under meeting net. It looks like a game of tal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's also problems with rook f1. So the problems are going both ways. So Michael, mm, yes, Brooklyn. What if you just play? Um. Wait. Ah, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Not so easy. Yeah, I was thinking of rook captures e e1. Okay, if rook captures e1 probably just gets met okay your your idea is being probably that he can't play queen takes e2 right yeah yeah and then knight takes e7 is going to be made but he probably just doesn't have to do that is that how this works if i just I play knight takes rook yeah N- now he's the one sacrificing his queen so we do need something a bit more inspiring And black does actually have a threat in this position. He is threatening to play queen takes g5. He's not threatening to take the queen because knight c7. Getting hungry. Who wants to find me a brilliant move so I can go eat? Help the starving children. I see it. I see it. What is the idea to quit right? Ah, uh, you go knight d6 check. Knight d6 check. Um, if I take this and say thank you. <laughs> I thought you was gonna the phone. Uh, we have the stream again, right? So yeah. <laughs> A nice trick, but not quite working, unfortunately. 
Okay, I'll give you guys one more minute and then we'll look at the answer if no one's found it. Well, the, the position looks familiar, but I'm trying to remember the continuation. <laughs> it, it's, I feel like it's almost harder when you're convinced you've seen a position before because you're not trying to solve the position. You're trying to remember what you saw. And that, yes, I'm hard. actually trying to remember. That's what's making it harder. <laughs> Mm. Wow, and it, and I think the move must be. I, I feel it is actually the the night indeed. No, I, no, I okay, could be. What do yeah, I do, uh, Munasha? I have uh, two suggestions. Two suggestions. Uh, the, That's cool. Yeah. Uh, the first one. Uh, what if you play uh, Roxy one? <laughs> Play rook c1. Um, maybe I go c6. Don't quote me on this. I think I can play c6. Now, I am going to just take your knight. Or actually, I just take your bishop, don't I? Queen takes g5. Yeah. But like, if, if you take the bishop... Uh... Can't white also take your knight there? I mean, you can take my knight, but like, I'll bring my bishop back to a5, and I don't know. I'm not convinced yet. I think you might have something, yeah, but not super convincing. That could work. I feel like that I should have a better move. Um, hmm, maybe I don't have a better move. No, I think rook one's fine, but there's better. What's your other suggestion? Okay, yeah, my other suggestion was uh, knight takes d7 again. Not the queen c7? Queen b5. Queen c6? Hmm. And it's not working, right? Okay. Yes. The right answer is a quiet move, which is always hard to play in these positions. Michael? Uh, Michael, wait! Oh, okay, I what what is I was green? gonna I was gonna say H H three H three H three is 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 terrible because I can take your bishop, but you you're very close. The right move is just H four, because one we protect the bishop, we threaten the queen, we still have these back rank ideas, and what is black's what is black supposed to play? I mean black has these back rank ideas which are now stopped quite a lot. Because we potentially have left fucking. And we're just threatening to play queen takes e5. And I don't think there's any convincing way to stop it. That was very strong. <laughs> yeah. There is still queen g3, which is, I think, the one way to stop it. They give rook d1, yeah. I thought there was something better. But maybe there isn't. Rook d1. Rook f2. Queen f2. Bishop f2. Rook d5. And there's just mate happening here, even at the end. So it does still require a bit more calculation. But the thing is, H4 just solves a lot of white's problems while kind of asking if black can solve his problems. So a very nice move. But okay, we are going to call it an evening there. I hope you guys all have enjoyed the session. I will share the link to this leecher study on the WhatsApp group. So you guys are welcome to check that out. And yeah, is there any questions? Uh Michael, yes, I just want to ask J Bay, the one, what is his name? What, are, what is your name, J Bay? Oh, my, my name is Jimmy Baleo. Jimmy. Jimmy. Yes, Baleo. Yeah, we just usually keep oh, okay. records of who attends these sessions just so we can <laughs> oh. know that some people okay. do show up. So thank you very much for coming, everyone. And I guess we call right. the evening there. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Bye. It was a pleasure. Thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, I, I really needed this.